until the base is cauterized nice and dry. So that first phase is our biopsy. After rinsing the curette under water to get formaldehyde off it, we do our second phase, which dresses out the base a little bit wider and removes any remaining tissue that might be on the edges. And we're down to a very, very firm base. We can scrape fairly hard. And now we have a little bit of a wider base. And again, we cure at the base. Just dabbing the surface to keep it dry as the cautery likes to have a dry surface. Going right around to the edges to make sure we cauterize any remaining tissue on the sides and again to a nice dry surface. Our last curatage again just removes any tissue that might be on the edges and we scrape it in different directions to make sure we clear it off completely. It takes off some of the dry tissue that we've cauterized. This tissue is not sent to the pathologist of course because there would be nothing but cautery artifact. So now we have a nice smooth clean base to that wound which is a little bit wider than what we started with because the tissue basal cell tends to be a little bit wider than what you see initially. Now we do our final cautery to dry up the base. We just clean the area a little bit here to make sure that it's removed of any of the rest of the blood and so on there. Afterwards, I like to put just a little bit of cicatrin powder or something similar on it, a dry antibiotic powder. What this does is it just dries up any re residual bleeder if there's anything remaining, and it just covers the area a bit so it's not so visible. That wound now will heal over about two weeks from the edges in. The crust will fall off. All that our patient will be left with is a small little white mark that really will be virtually invisible once healed and that will be the end of that basal cell. And you see there just from the uh, where the needle went into anesthetic. Mm -hmm. 
I'm using water uh, because it, uh, the technology works by vaporizing water. And so we have to have the surface wet while we're working on it. So we're able to sculpt it down rather than cutting, and uh, this leaves minimal to no scar. Almost finished. Usually we have very minimal bleeding too because the uh, we have some cotter helping as we cut. Okay, that's it on that one. Now, this is a sebaceous hyperplasia lesion. Some of these I just put a probe in. Uh, but this one will actually just shave off like we did the uh, mole. Okay, here's another mole on the other side, similar technique to what we just saw. Just a beautiful sculpting procedure. Have you ever been told by a doctor or somebody that uh, a mole on your face shouldn't be taken off because a scar would be worse than the, uh, than the original mole? That doesn't just have to be true anymore. We can 